Ah, uh, there we go. Uh, I'm going to set this here, my laptop. You won't believe what I just did. I tried to do a video earlier, and I was rec what I thought I was recording. I probably went on for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, and then I realized zero, 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 not recording. It was a shame. I thought I had some good stuff in there, and I will never know. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, welcome. Welcome back. This is uh, Tivana Tias. Oh, sorry. Get a little light over there. Uh, this is Tivana Tias, and I'll be doing two new teas, which I just had to make a, again. Can't believe I did that. But I, c'est la vie, as the French say, that's life. So I have two new teas here from uh, Simpson and Vale from their national parks. Though in their catalog, it says six, but apparently it's a, um, I keep saying here, they say six Samp, you know, from their national parks, uh, tea line, but there's actually clearly more. Arcadia, Grand Canyon, Great Smoky Mountains, Rocky Mountains, Shenandoah, Yellowstone, Yosemite, and Zion, which is eight national parks. You guys have a typo. But anyway, uh, I did, I think, the other two in a previous video, which was, what were they? <laughs> Yellowstone and Rocky Mountains, yes. Which apparently is my mother's favorite now because of the uh, raspberry. Oh, I didn't know Rocky Mountains were known for raspberries, but apparently they are. Uh, my friends from Colorado, you can probably let me know if you've ever been there. See a lot of raspberries growing all over the place and sage. It's a very wise and humble tea, uh, but it's quite good. But are the teas reminiscent of the national parks? I really don't know. I've been to some, well, more or less I've been through them. Um, I've been to Yellowstone, but I was three years old. And I really don't remember. <laughs> yeah, the, I'm in my 30s, so I was 30 years ago, three decades ago. So I, I... Uh, Shenandoah, I've been through Shenandoah. I've been near the Shenandoah Valley, mountains, river. Never really spent too much time there. And I wouldn't really know. Like some of them I've really been to or through for a very long time, and some I've just never been to that particular part of the country. Great Smoky Mountains, I think I might have been close by there, through, but not, you know, it was like driving by, so Grand Canyon, I've never been to Yosemite, I've never been to California, I've never been to Utah, that's where Zion National Park is, Great uh, the Rocky Mountains is in Colorado, never been there, like I said, Shenandoah, Alcadia, which is in Maine. I've been I've been through it. Um, never really hiked or spent much time up there. That's in on Bail not Bailey Island. I'm sorry, on Mount Desert Island. That's where Bar Harbor is. Bahab. Uh, that's how they say Bahab. Um, but it's by there. Most of it, pretty much all of it, is part of the Alcadia National Park, and there's a little bit on the mainland, but that's about it. It's one of the smallest we have, um, but it's also highly visited. So, like the flavors, I, sorry, can't really take me back. But, um, as somebody who likes to travel, likes to hike, I've been to places, even though I've not really been, I remember the grand places like the Grand Canyon, which in this corner 
and a Harney and Sons cup is the Grand Canyon. As you can see, nice, lovely color. It's probably a little darker in this one. I'm not gonna, I don't want to. I know you probably can't really see it too clearly, but I don't want to get it too close to the computer. That happened to me once. I spilled tea on an old laptop of mine. I'm not going to repeat that same mistake. So it's safely over here. The battery's up side. Uh, I'm going to try this one first because um, in this mug, it's hotter, longer. And in this mug, it cools a lot quicker. Be fairly cool. Oh, it has a beautiful smell. Some of these really kind of do take you like through a nice nature walk. Um, even around here, you know, we don't have, like I said, we don't have grand places like Yosemite or Yellowstone or Grand Canyon, which is a hole in the ground. But I've been also told it's very boring. I don't know. I guess for somebody who's first been there. But if you've been there multiple times, like even around here in New Jersey, I guess somebody like me who's lived here most of my life, on and off, it might seem kind of boring, like me. But if you look for the negative in anything, you're always going to find it. Always, It's always good to look for the positive. And there are some nice places here in New Jersey. Even if you really want to go through more challenging hikes, northwestern part of the state would have it. Um, rest of the state. There's some hills, but I mean, it's I won't delude myself. It's not the Rocky Mountains. It's not even Maine. Uh, but there's some good places. There's some lovely, you know, like natural history, natural formations, which I find fascinating. I just love the way landscapes come out, you know, through like nature. Uh, like the Grand Canyon, you, know, you see pictures or videos, beautiful, you know, like it's, especially the light hits it right. I guess you have to be there really to see it. But the light hits it right, the stones. And, and when you think about it, just, I don't know, just the way nature can be. It's just, it can be grand and calm one minute, ferocious the next, and then somewhere in the middle, all in the same time. I mean, the Grand Canyon was formed many, many years ago, ancient times, before rock and roll and Bo Diddy. Um, there was a huge war, massive war. All these rivers were little bodies of water. Not that much water out there anymore, but uh, one river kind of runs through four states and supplies. And I was looking for more water sources. Um but anyway, there was a huge war, massive war. There was these ancient rivers that no longer exist. And they fought each other. And there was a small river called the Colorado River, which is now what it's called. But at the time, it was just a small fry. It was the underdog. And all these rivers wanted to knock each other off, and then they tried to do this. But the Colorado River held out. And the surviving rivers had a siege. And the Colorado River, oh, he, he got his oh, blood rage up. Well, water rage, but eh, like both liquids. And he smashed right through that barricade, a big wall. He broke it apart, rocks flying all over the place. Dust clouds. Cats and dogs living together, mass hysteria, and he and he destroyed, knocked out those rivers right off. He sent them into the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean. He put those bodies of water. He oh, he threw them all over the place. Kind of messy. He needed a huge mop, but he and after the mushroom clouds cleared, you got the Grand Canyon. It was beautiful. That's what happens when you stay home at the, at the, at the long stretches of the day. <laughs> uh, thanks to the pandemic going around. 
Uh, but yeah, that's how the Grand Canyon was formed, the Colorado River. Now it's a nice, calm, peaceful river. And he's living the life, the river. He, he has his own... Nice tourist attraction. And it flows, like I said, through four states and it supplies a lot of water for uh, people in that area. Um, but I always keep finding, trying to find more water sources. And sometimes they're successful, a lot of times not. It is basically a desert out there. Um, so yeah, anyway. I think it's cooled off a little bit. So like I said, the Grand Canyon, it has, what does it have? Oh, prickly pear. And I can definitely smell the aroma in here. You can definitely smell it. it has like a fruity taste. A fruity, well, not too, but a fruity like smell. It has like a wonderful aroma. Uh, some of these teas, the aroma is definitely, like I said, take you to a nice nature walk. Kind of reminds me sometimes of Princeton Woods. It's a beautiful nature walk in Princeton, New Jersey. You know, I got all the floras, the trees, and bushes, and flowers, all the beautiful smells they, they give you. So this has prickly pear. Uh, and a couple of a couple of words I'm not even sure how to pronounce correctly. <laughs> so please bear with me. Uh, Elithra root. Pade, uh, I'm, not even, I'm just going to spell them. E L E U T H E R O root and P A U D with an apostrophe on top. A R C O. Okay, the root I've heard of, but I'm not even really sure what that tastes because it's always blended with other things. So I'm not like I'm not even sure if I can single it out. There's some flavors if I'm not sure. I try to think of. Like what it comes closest to, but others I just don't know. Like I'm trying to think. I mean, we've all spent a lifetime of foods. So, by the way, these are been steeped for about three minutes each. I that's, they seem to recommend that with all their teas. And that's basically what I go through at first. And I've usually more often than not, the recommendation is pretty good. But I like to experiment sometimes. It may need an extra minute or two or a minute or 30 seconds less. I mean, it all, all differs. If when you taste, I mean, you're obviously going to, your taste buds, you might, might be stronger for you or we, you know, you have to experiment and find out what suits you best. I mean, we all spend a lifetime of food. So we also associate different flavors and tastes. Sometimes you might taste something in a cup of tea or coffee or wine that others may not get or they get, you may not get, vice versa. And it differs, you know. What I may taste will be different than your experience, obviously. Hmm. Ooh. I never had a prickly pear fresh. I don't know if it's any different than a regular pear. It has its own distinct taste. But I'll tell you, the pear flavor in here is strong in this cup. Ooh. It is really good. It's like a light black tea, medium bodied. Be good for a dessert tea or afternoon. Um, so, yeah, parents are getting up, so it should be a good for like an afternoon tea dessert, like I said. Mm. Uh, 
going to put a little sugar in here just to get out some of the hidden flavors, which I did before. And of course, now this is the second time that I've had these teas. And I didn't know a little sugar does bring it out a little bit more, makes it a little more sweeter, not like sickly sweet, overpowering, but pretty good. Oh, there you go. I just paused it for a sec. Mmm. Delicious. Like I said, it's a little sweeter. And the flavor comes out more. It is a delicious, refreshing, refreshing pear flavor. It's like kind of biting into like a very ripe, very like pick of the season, a very juicy pick of the season kind of pear. It is good. Damn good. I'm kind of finding it hard to figure out which is my favorite uh, tea of these. I haven't tried them all yet. So far, Yellowstone pretty much comes up top. I really, really enjoy that. <laughs> it's like creamy. Like it is really good. And the Rocky Mountains, like I said, the raspberry. Oof. I'm not sure about the Great Smoky Mountains. They, there might be like another tea, like a Lapshong Shushong. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Which is a very smoky black tea, Chinese black tea. I think it might be similar. Is that going to wrap up, like make it similar to the Great Smoky Mountains? But we'll see. Uh, I was thinking of doing this live, but did it? I may or may not bring my laptop, but uh, next week I will be away for a couple of weeks. I'll be in North Carolina, and I won't be able to do this. Mm. I'm not sure if I can get the other flavors, like, but the pears really dominates. Dominates even more when you add a little sugar. Oh, ooh, this is good. This be good. Um, yeah, I'll be away. My uh, aunt is kind of prim and proper. Uh, you, you do the slurping thing, and she'll probably whack you with a wooden spoon if people do that anymore. But that's really the best way to really taste the tea is drink it straight when you're tasting, um, you know, anything for the first time, whether it be wine, coffee, chocolate, well, I mean, liquid. But there are chocolate tasters. I don't know about its eating. But when you slurp, you know, like a liquid, like tea or coffee or a glass of wine, that's the best way to get it. You swish it around your mouth, your tongue, your cheeks, up, down, side, you know. That's the best way to get it. Um, it's a slurp. But you still can't do that around my aunt. Uh, no. So I'll be down visiting relatives. Um, my aunt will be... It's my uncle's sister and my mom's sister. Um, my uncle uh, was taking his kids somewhere, and, um, and I'll be down there uh, helping babies, well, not babies, dog sitting. My paw cousin, who I did last year, and really enjoyed it. Uh, we bonded. <laughs> uh, so I'm actually really going down for the dog, but don't tell me. Uh, the panda is very sweet. That's her name, Panda. Beautiful, beautiful husky. Very sweet dog. Very well behaved. Uh, she listens to you mostly, <laughs> but she's a very, very good dog. Very fast. Um, I often run, run with her. I guess she really enjoyed running because my cousin told me that um, when she got back from, you know, the vacation they went out west um panda didn't run with her for a while i don't know if they probably does now but she's like i think she misses you avi she doesn't run with me anymore <laughs> oh oh my god i 
but she's fast. I've tripped a few times. She comes back. They're like, okay, you're fine. And, you know, wanders off. I'm like, thanks. It's fast. And they're the fastest dogs, huskies. That's what she is. There's two types of huskies. There's a Siberian husky and an Alaskan husky. And they're bred for typical things. And then there's Alaskan Malibu, which is another, which is basically another husky. Different type of brute. You know, slight. It's a cousin or a relative. I always thought greyhounds were the fastest, but looked it up. It's actually the husky beats them out quite a bit. Uh, I don't think they race greyhounds anymore. It's largely become illegal, mainly because of the way they treated them. Um, but huskies, they still do. They apparently, thankfully, they don't recall ever hearing any bad negative things about breeding or training them for running, for dog sledding across Alaska. But greyhounds, you've heard. A lot of, they take a lot of abuse, unfortunately. So they got rid of a lot of those places. But I think there still are some that probably, I hope, treat them better. Hmm. Way to go, Simpson and Vale. Way to go. Mm. What happens? What do you do with a really great cup of tea? Perfect cup of tea. You take the mug. You destroy it. I, I, I like this mug. <laughs> I like this mug, too. Now, this is... Oops. Yeah. My foot got my foot got caught in something. Anyway, this is Yosemite. Yosemite Sam. And this is a make flowers, herbs from the park, including spearmint and pineapple weed. Uh, pineapple weed. I didn't know pineapples had weeds. When I, th when I think of pineapples, I normally think of, like, the islands, the Caribbean, South Seas, Southeast Asia. I know they grow them in California, but I don't know, just for some reason. I think more of oranges out there. Not, I mean, dude, pineapples and coconuts. But... And of course, Hawaii, which they, they grow as well. Anyway. Okay. If you hear any sounds, that's my mother. This aroma, you definitely smell some hint of the mint. It's not a real strong experiment, I don't think, or a real strong pineapple. But it's not weak either. It's somewhere in the middle. And the body of the tea is pretty much in the middle. Like five tea leaves, I would rank it. Three to 3.5. Like I said, I've had this before. <laughs> In the video where I forgot to record. Ugh. Hmm. I think there's a faint hint of pineapple. The uh, spearmint comes out quite a bit. I think it kind of overtakes. But it's good. This will be a good afternoon tea, especially with the spearmint. It's, mint tea is often popular in the afternoon as well after dinner. Like if you have a heavy meal, a spicy meal, good for the stomach, calms it down. Nice evening, too. It's a good body black tea. It's like, like I said, it's like a medium body. It's not real strong, but not weak either. So it's like in the middle. A little bit of the pineapple, sort of.
Hmm. Yeah, that's why I'm not going to be doing any videos down in North Carolina, not tea tasting videos. I might record it, another video down there, though I don't know what the topic will be. Like right now, I've been doing a lot of tea tasting videos. So when I get back, I'll be doing the rest of the uh, national parks. But, um, hmm. I don't have to think about it. And I'll, I'll let you know. Maybe I'll do a tea pairing. But I don't know what kind of teas I'll have down there. I might bring some of these or may not. I'm still kind of figuring out. Oh, something. I was going to do a podcast with this too. But didn't. And thank you for listening to my podcasts. As I see, I've been growing. Some listeners from more parts of the country. Uh, United States and the Philippines seem to be my biggest listeners. And France. And Australia. And quite a few other places too, which I find fascinating. Like Turkey and Ireland. I have to look at it again think yeah you know, my podcast analytics I know I have not been doing many of them <clears throat> um just because I haven't done that just because I'm quiet just mainly because I was thinking of doing something with about tea ceremonies and it's like a huge thing you know there's, ma there's many around the world and many different customs I've been trying to figure out which ones I think I'm, just, I'm not going to do like one gigantic I'm going to do several episodes probably like pick a different country, you know, feature. I think maybe India. Uh, some friends of mine, social media, were from India, West Bengal. Thank you very much. Who gave me some links? I'll be doing um, probably uh, India, and um, I should be doing it shortly. And I will be doing more podcasts. So. Let me see. United States, Australia, France. Philippines. They seem to have a lot more in the Philippines. It seems to have dropped. Ooh. Germany, United Kingdom, Ireland, Turkey, Thailand, Canada, the Czech Republic. Hey. Uh, Finland. Singapore. I think Singapore. Nice. And Mexico. And I think I know that Mexican. <laughs> I have a friend in Mexico who followed since Google Plus and yeah. Uh, thanks, Laura. You're my one percent in Mexico. <laughs> uh, okay. Anyway. By the way, I don't think these teas really need any sugar. But sometimes I like to put you know, for this purpose, you know, for hidden flavors. But they're pretty good. Oh. Sometimes I put sugar in my tea, sometimes I don't. It varies. Depends on the tea. Cream I don't put in. I don't I think I did that once when I was, a, you know, when I was a kid because, you know, saw the adults do that, so I did that. And after a while, I kind of broke off from that and drank tea more and more pure without any additives. But I'm not obviously, obviously, I'm not 100%. <laughs> Sometimes I do like to put, you know, a little sugar, a little lemon, depends on the tea, a little honey. Of course, I kind of do, I do more honey if I'm not feeling that well. Honey and lemon, good cold remedy. Oh. Cheers, Lachaim, Slancha, Tigay, Tigay, however they say in Filipino. Hmm, that spearmint comes out more. A little bit of the pineapple. Like I said, it's not a real strong pineapple. 
but it's not too weak either. It's in there, but I think it's more of a hint. Pineapple weed. Okay. I didn't think they had... I know they have green leaves coming out. Is that what they mean? Maybe they call that the green part weed. I don't know. It also has marigold in it as well. I'm not even really sure I get marigold flavor. Maybe I do, but I'm not really sure. Whew. But it's quite good. I think most of these teas are pretty much good for like an afternoon, you know, after dinner. Kind of thinking of what I could pair them with. Maybe a pineapple upside down cake. Hmm. Yeah, really. Mm. It's a really good tea after like a long day or want to relax. Enjoy the quiet. Sound of music or book. Well, I think that'll be it for this video. Like I said, I'll do more when I get back from my trip in North Carolina, which thankfully um, the virus apparently seems to be subsiding, thankfully. At first, I got a lot of people kind of didn't really take too many precautions so it kind of was high for a while over there but i think it's apparently it's gone down so i guess more people excuse me being more cautious and a little more safe uh which is good just hope that it goes away very soon like yesterday like last year So I wish you all a good weekend. Stay healthy, stay safe. And again, thanks for watching. Please feel free to hit the you like it, like my videos, want to see more. Uh, please hit the um, subscribe on the bottom of the video. Hit that little bell icon so you get, you know, updates, notifications when new videos come out and. Um, when I go live, I'll probably will do a live video when I get back. Um, so again, take care, be well, shalom, my friends.